Hello everyone, this is me Simran Anand. Uh, so today in this video, I'm going to be covering a particular concept of data structures, which is binary search tree. So I'm going to be covering topics, the different approaches involved in solving uh, binary search tree problem, problems like uh, depth first search, breadth first search, uh, what are the, actually the applications of binary search tree in real life. Uh, I'm going to be coding a, a particular problem in lead code, which is to small the to find the scale smallest element in a binary search tree in Java. So before we actually delve into that problem, I would like to first give you uh, just about what is binary search tree, uh, what are the different properties of binary search tree and how different it is from the other trees that is other data structures as well in uh, Java or beat any programming language. So uh, binary search tree to first give you an introduction. So there is a term called binary tree and binary tree is a non-linear data structure basically. So if you've heard about linear and non-linear data structures, so non-linear data structures are not sequential in nature. So they do not follow, uh, you know, a, although it is a hierarchical data structure, I would say binary tree and binary search tree are hierarchical data structures, but it is a non-linear data structure, unlike arrays, linked lists, uh, or stacks and queues, uh, tree comes under non-linear data structure. So when I talk about binary tree, binary tree is non-linear hierarchical data structure in Java. And uh, in, and also each node, we have the concepts of nodes or in uh, a tree. So each node of a tree or a parent node has at most two children or two child nodes. So when we say at most two child nodes, it can either, uh, you know, a particular node can either have zero, one or two children. Of course, there are different variants of binary trees. So one of the variants, like uh, one, you know, special case of binary tree is a binary search tree. And uh, what is unique about binary search tree is uh, are the list of properties it has, which actually distinguish it from a regular binary tree. So let's delve into what is binary search tree because I'm going to be solving this particular problem of lead code today, which is Kate's smallest element in a BSD. So you know, a binary search tree has this following properties. So the listed over here, let me explain you each one of them to give you a clear picture. So value ordering, the values in the left subtree of a node. So basically when I told binary tree, you know, I didn't tell talk anything about which node, whether the left node, right node, see a node. If I just talk to you, what, uh, you know, if I just tell you what is a tree, this is something like a tree. If you see this three over here is a node, one, four, two are also nodes. But then the topmost element or the topmost node of a binary the tree is called as the root node and of course it has parents uh, the parent and the child node so three over here has child nodes which is one and four one has its child node which is two so when i say to talk about the uh, left subtree and right subtree this entire is a tree but of course when we consider what are the subtrees so when we see the left part of it which is one and two nodes come under the left of the root node so they can be considered as a left subtree whereas a right subtree is just the set of nodes, which is four over here. So the left subtree and right subtree are disjoint in nature. But a special property in binary search tree is that the roots, which are the left nodes, are less in value or less uh, lesser than the root node or the parent node, and the root and the nodes which are located on the right of the node are higher in value that or greater in value than the root node. So if you see here, one and two, of course, are less than three, four is greater than three. So it can be considered in an ascending order, we could say already in an uh, sorted order. So that is binary search tree. And of course, it follows as a name uh, also consider, you know, it contains an algorithm inside it, which is binary search. So let me tell you, when I say value ordering, that was all about it, like left subtree, uh, left uh, value, left root is less than the root value is less than the right node. That is the unique property of binary search tree, unlike the binary tree where we do not have this value ordering arrangement. So that was all about it. So you can see over here, it is less, always less than or equal to the node's value and the values in the right subtree are always greater than the node's value. So this property ensures that the binary search tree is ordered, allowing for efficient searching, insertion and deletion properties. So it makes it really faster as well because see, as I told you, optimizing the time complexity is an important concept, right? So it, of course, uh, many of the BST problems we encounter, the binary C, uh, search technique just takes the order of log n. Uh, in uh, you know as uh, in contrast to order of n it just takes order of log n thereby simplifying the time complexity and reducing it 
Uh, the next property is unique key. Each node in the BST has a unique key. No two nodes can have the same key value. So if I just take this small example of my BST over here, or take this example over here. So if you see here, each and every node has its unique value. They cannot have repetitive nodes. That is in BST. The next comes recursive structure. The left and right subtrees of a node in a BST are themselves binary search tree. As I've already told you, the see the child nodes of this root node 5. The child nodes are 3, 2, 1, 4. You know, they are themselves a tree, subtree, which is the left subtree of the node, whereas 6 is the right subtree. Now, they, 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 that's why they have the recursive structure. And when I solve the problem, I'm going to be explaining you both approaches, which is recursive approach and iterative approach. For the iterative approach, I'm going to be demonstrating using uh, another data structure, which is that data structure. And for the recursive approach, of course, recursion, uh, you know, we need, uh, we need some helper function or we need a function that calls itself. Right, a function which calls itself repeatedly inside the function is called as recursive function. So, with the help of that, recursive structure allows for efficient traversal and manipulation of the tree. Search efficiency. Now, binary search tree, uh, the uniqueness of BST is that it has uh, follows a search efficiency. So, it's very efficient. See, searching is such a property that, you know, beat various nodes. If this is just a small tree, but if you have n number of nodes in, in if you consider like a files, a uh, practical example of a folder having, you know, millions and, you know, not millions, but just thousands and hundreds of files, it becomes really hard for us to actually index and search for a particular file or a file with a particular value or a, uh, some keyword, right? So in order to do that, it, to, in order to simplify the time taken or to reduce the time taken for searching, binary search makes it really, um, you know, uh, it comes very handy. So if you see the search efficiency, uh, they offer efficient search operations. So given a key value, three can be traversed by comparing the key with the values at each node. And uh, the worst case of an unbalanced tree is order of n. So if you talk about the time complexity is order of n, but uh, the resulting time complexity, as I've told, in any uh, binary search tree, in general, they have just order of log n. Uh, you know, if it is already a balanced binary search tree, balanced binary search tree is when you already have the uh, left subtree values or the nodes present to the left is less than the root value and it is just the root value should be less than the ones, the nodes values, which are located to the right of the root. So, that is the process eliminates half of the remaining tree at each step, resulting in a time complexity of order of log n, where n is the number of nodes in the tree. So nodes are nothing but the elements of the tree. Okay, so I've already explained you. The, this is the root node, which is the top. The, uh, the nodes which are present at the bottom of the tree are called as the leaf nodes. Right. So if you just consider a tree, this is a root node, which is the topmost element. The last elements are the last uh, most, you know, um, nodes of the tree are called as the leaf nodes and the ones in the between are the internal nodes. So you do have the concept of parent node and child node. So uh, so that's uh, your properties of binary search tree. There are further properties like when you consider insertion and deletion. So when you talk about like searching we have covered, it's very, uh, uh, BST comes really handy when we are actually searching. As the name also, also says that it's applying the binary search technique. But when you talk of insertion and deletion also, in a binary search tree, it maintains the order property. So though you have to remember that the uniqueness of binary search tree that the left most, you know, left subtree values less than the root node, less than the right node. That is like standard. But then when inserting a new node, it is compared with the existing nodes and inserted at the appropriate location to maintain the ordering. So anyway, if it need not be the case that you are already, you know, always inserting a node uh, to the rightmost or to the leftmost. If you are even in trying to insert any node somewhere in the between, it will actually compare the nodes values with the previous nodes as the, as the preceding and the succeeding nodes. And wherever uh, it finds the correct uh, the appropriate location by for uh, maintaining the order, it is going to actually insert the node. So when deleting a node, the tree is restructured to preserve the order property. So of uh, the um, you know the order property is one such crucial aspect of a binary search tree which has to be maintained and even if you're performing insertion and deletion operation the order property is one such aspect which is actually taken into consideration so these operations also have average time complexity of order of log n always remember the time complexity is the time taken to complete some operation right so if you consider the binary search tree it takes order of log n uh, whereas in the worst case so we have something called as the best case worst case average case so the best case and the average case you can consider as order of log n which is much simpler right it simplifies the process because if you consider you know a order of one is the best then comes order of log n order of n and so on so if you just say in practical situations it takes order of log n but in the worst case when you have 
of an unbalanced binary search tree, it may take up only order of n. It does not take order of n square or something like that, or order of n log n even. It just takes order of n. So balanced binary search tree, when I talk about what is that, an additional property often desirable for binary search tree is balance. So what is a balanced BST? It ensures that the height of the tree is minimized, resulting in more efficient operations. Some commonly used balanced BST variants include AVL tree, red black tree, and B trees. So uh, we will, this is like not in the scope. And now I see AVL trees, red black trees, these are different variants of BST, balanced BSTs. Uh, but I would not be covering in this video. Maybe in the future, I'll be uh, delving more, uh, you know, further into what is AVL tree the properties. But uh, in this scope of the video, I would say, I would talk about what is a binary search tree. And uh, it, there is a variant of binary search tree, which is balanced binary search tree, which are nothing but the height should be minimized. So what is the height of the BST? Height is, you know, the number, the total number of levels in the binary search tree, we can say or the total number of, uh, you know, yeah, the levels. So if you consider the total number of edges also, you can say in the binary search tree, so the height of this particular binary search tree would be uh, one, two, three, and four. So you can see this is so the number total number of edges plus one, or you can just say the total number of nodes in the binary search tree is considered to be its height. So that is the height of the binary search tree. So when we have, want to minimize the height, but now because we are minimizing the height in order to reduce various other compli you know, complicate uh, operations. So in order to uh, basically an optimized approach or to op an optimized balanced binary search tree is nothing but a bal you know, uh, it can be considered as an AVL tree, red black tree and so on. So these properties make BSTs useful for a wide range of applications that require efficient searching, insertion, deletion on ordered data. So you should always remember, although it's a non-linear data structure, but they do follow an order property. There is an order property, uh, you know, even in the binary search tree. Now, moving on to the next topic, which is, uh, you know, the next subtopic, which is DFS versus BFS. So I was explaining you about binary search trees. Now coming to, you know, the two most popular approaches we actually use for solving such, you know, uh, trees problems is DFS and BFS. We mostly use it for graph problems, you know, when you come across graphs. So graph is another data structure. It is different from a binary search tree. It's different from a tree as well. Graph is another data structure. But in tree as well, we can apply DFS and BFS, which are recursive approaches. But um, because since I will be covering recursive approaches, I would like to, you know, give a gist about what is DFS, BFS and the key differences between them. And then we'll be also be delving into iterative approach. Iterative approach does not need, you know, particular um, insight or explanation into that because as the name says, iterative means you're going to use loops, be it for loop, while loop, do while loop, right? So I'm going to explain you using loops. And for iterative approach, I'm going to use stack data structure, as I've already told you. But for DFS and BFS, no, I'm going to use DFS, by the way, but these two come under the recursive approach. So when I say recursive approach, I'm going to call in a helper function or a function, recursive function that's going to call itself inside it. So coming to DFS and BFS, DFS stands for depth first search and BFS is breadth first search. The main, main, main difference between DFS and BFS is that although both of them are used for traversing or searching in a graph or a tree data structure, the main difference is that, you know, DFS is that it's going to like, uh, it uses the stack data structure and BFS uses the queue data structure. That was one the key difference, right? So uh, all of these both are different algorithms. You should always remember algorithms are making use of a data structure, right? So DFS, it uses stack. BFS uses Q and DFS. So when I say stack, you should remember that it follows the last in first out or the leaf order, right? If you might be knowing the property of stack. So stack is, you know, uh, I would say a primary data structure, which, you know, it, it comes handy in various solving various problems. So when I talk about stack, it is last in first out. Element inserted at the last will be popped out or uh, will be removed first. It comes out first. But in Q, it's first in first out where we have the first element. The first element inserted first is going to come out first. So when I talk about DFS, it is basically your uh, instead of going level wise, you're going from the root to the down. So it's, you're actually following property of depth. You're giving the importance to the depth parameter wherein you are uh, actually, you know, moving from top to down. You can remember like that in a depth, uh, DFS, you're actually moving from top to down in the tree. But in a BFS, it's not like that. You're moving level wise. So it's like you're moving left to right in the BFS. Uh, so just uh, you know, a small example. If I just say DFS traversal of this particular tree, uh, it's, it would, it's going to be 5, 3, 2, 1, then 4, and then 6. That is why you're actually following you know, from the top to the bottom. But whereas if you say uh, the BFS is going to be 5, 
which is the first level, the zeroth level, since, uh, you know, indexes start from zero in Java. So the first level is actually going to be level zero. Three and six fall in level one, two and four in level two, and one in level three, which is the last level. Although you can see there are actually four levels and the height is also four, as I've told you, this particular tree. But then if you talk about the levels, the levels are going to be total height minus one, which is four minus one is three. So in the level zero, it's going to be level wise in BFS. So the traversal in BFS is going to be five, three, six, two, four, one. So we see here, we're not going top to bottom, but we are rather going left to right. So that is the uh, difference between BFS and DFS, which I've demonstrated you. So talk about what is, you know, how to go about with DFS and something about the, you know, the concepts, the process steps to follow. I would say visit a node or a vertex. The node and the vertex is synonymous, by the way. So if we say, if we talk about a node, take it in terms of tree, but when you consider something like a graph, then you have the term as vertex. So visit a node or vertex and mark it as visited. Explore as far as possible along each branch before backtracking. You have the concept of backtracking over here. Since I've already told you, DFS and BFS are recursive, right? They are recursive in nature. Uh, so in recursion concept, there is a concept called as backtracking. Backtracking is where you are moving from a particular node, you're moving upwards, or if, if that is in a tree. But if you're using a, in terms of, you're talking in terms of a data structure, linear data structure, then backtracking involves moving back, you know, a recursive approach when you're moving some steps back right that is called as a backtracking and uh, if you've heard of you know other concepts like dynamic programming other advanced topics that it comes really handy over there so explore we are going to explore each and we are exploring as in we are traversing right we are uh, traversing each and every element or each every node uh, along each branch before backtracking then use a stack since we are dfs is going to use stack as i've already mentioned we are using a stack through either recursion or explicitly to keep track of the nodes to visit. So the nodes which have already been visited are, we're going to traverse that, but we are going to use a stack to keep a track of all the nodes to visit. So whichever the nodes are not visited, we are going to, uh, you know, put them in the stack, stack data structure. And the nodes which have already been visited or are already been traversed, you know, in the tree have been marked as visited. Uh, this becomes very clear when you actually practically code, by the way. So this was just to give you a brief introduction about DFS and BFS. The order of visiting nodes is determined by the order in which the, they are pushed into the stack. So, you know, the, of course, it takes uh, in stack, we have follow the leaf or last and first out. That is the order. So the order in which they're pushed into the stack is, you know, th that is uh, that determines the order of actually visiting nodes. So when I told you in the first step also, we are visiting a, a node or a vertex, but how do you think we are visiting? It's not randomly we are visiting. So we are going to visit it by uh, an order, which is followed by the way in which we are pushing it to the stack. Uh, coming to the key difference uh, characteristics of DFS, it explores each branch as deeply as possible before backtracking. It uses a stack to keep track of nodes to visit. It is often implemented recursively. DFS is useful to tasks. Now, the application of DFS, where it's used, is like finding connected components. Uh, it just especially comes handy in graph data structure. we are finding connected components. So, you know, see, graphs can be either disjoint and even various disjoint graphs, right? Disjoint is a term when they're not actually connected. The nodes and the vertices have no connection or an edge between them, right? So that is called as a not connected graph. So when you actually find a connected components, uh, DFS comes hand handy. Detecting cycles is again, a, you know, a application of DFS. Cycle is when you're finding, you know, beta, you know, any data structure. There is a cycle means the first node is connected to the last node. That is where it forms a cycle. Searching for paths or solutions that may be deep in the graph. That is where DFS comes handy. So when you're actually giving importance to the depth. So in case when the tree is going very, you know, there is depth instead of having wide trees. So when I talk in terms of width, uh, BFS is prefer uh, preferred, which is breadth first search, right? Breadth means the width. But in depth first search, you're giving importance to the depth or the height of the tree, we can say, right? Synonymous. So we can say that when, uh, for, for, you know, searching for paths, so especially when these two algorithms come very handy when you're actually searching anything, right? And as BST, binary search tree, we also have the term searching, right? We're actually searching, inserting, deleting, anything requires traversal. So when we actually traverse, uh, we're actually traversing each node. We're also searching for paths and solutions. So for such graphs or trees, which are actually very deep, we use the DFS. Coming to BFS. The properties are we are visiting a vertex or node and market is visited, same as DFS. Explore all adjacent or connected nodes. Now here we are not going to use a stack, we are going to use something called as a queue. Right, I've already explained to you, BFS uses a queue. 
so q data structure so, uh, so exploring or we are not now uh, instead of like you know compare it to the dfs where we are actually exploring as far as possible like uh, we are exploring as i have already told you 5 3 2 1 this is the way we are top to bottom right but in uh, bfs we are not going to do that we are going to explore as far as possible which is in terms of the width uh, along each branch before backtracking and in this uh, we are going to use in BFS, by the way, we are going to uh, explore all adjacent or connected nodes. So adjacent or connected nodes is in the same level. They are, if you consider a tree, they fall in the same level. But in, in the case of a graph, it's going to be, because see, BFS and DFS, they are uh, such algorithms or approaches which come uh, very handy in graph problems also. So in the context of gra graph scenarios also, these steps can be formulated. We are exploring all the adjacent or connected nodes before moving to the next level. Now comes over here, moving to the next level. So that is why I was talking about level. You should always remember the term level when you're talking about DFS because moving from first level to the second level and subsequent levels. But in DFS, you're moving, right? You're not completing the level wise. You're not moving. It's not level wise traversal. Rather, it's going to be either, you know, from the node, you're going to move on to the left subtree. After the left subtree has been completed, you're going to move to the root and then through the right subtree. Right. So that is how recursive kind of way in uh, DFS. So we are using a queue in BFS to keep track of the nodes to visit. Order of visit nodes is, uh, visiting nodes is determined by the order in which it is enqueued. The nodes are enqueued. Similar in DFS, we have said that the order is determined by how we are going to put them, the nodes, visited nodes in the stack. In BFS, we are going to, uh, the order is where it's determined with the order in which they're enqueued. NQ is inserting, right? So if you have something called in stack, uh, if you know, stack uh, in insertion is called as pushing operation. Removing is called as popping operation. In BFS, we have something called as NQ and DQ. So NQ means insertion, DQ means deletion, right? So this is uh, BFS. Key characteristics of BFS. In short, I would like to just explain you. BFS explores all the neighbors of a node before moving to the next level. Uses a queue to keep track of nodes to visit. Guarantees that the shortest path in terms of edges to each visited node is found first. BFS is useful for tasks like finding the shortest path, exploring the nearest nodes, and solving puzzles with multiple level, levels or steps. That is all, uh, you know, the properties, key characteristics of BFS. So as I've already explained you, it uh, actually it explores the neighbors. So since the neighbors fall in terms of three, it falls into the same level, level wise. So we're actually exploring the levels or the neighbors of a node before moving to the next level, level wise traversal, right? So that is quite simple now. Now that you've understood the main difference between DFS and BFS is the, definitely the order in which we are traversing the nodes. DFS goes deep into a branch before exploring the other branches. BFS explores all neighbors falling in the same level before moving into the next level. So the choice between a BFS and, uh, BFS and DFS depends on the specific problem requirements and the uh, requirements of the application. That was all about it. Coming to applications of BSD in real life. So this is why uh, I would like to really cover what is, uh, you know, the real purpose of why we are actually, you know, getting to uh, apply BSD, why to actually study BSD uh, in real life, the applications. Before moving into the, you know, the coding problem, this is uh, or this is something I would like to really cover. So they have, you know, enormous uh, variety of applications of BSG in real life. Some of them are listed over here. File systems, I have already explained you, a folder having various and uh, number of number of files inside them. And we're actually searching for each file. So you can consider a folder as a tree, right? And the, there is a root directory. So, you know, you know of, of course, you've heard of folder having different directories right a file directory so the root file uh, the root directory is called as the something called as a parent so you can consider that as a root directory the root node itself and then the child uh, of the root nodes are the inside subfolders and the subfiles right so they do efficiently organize and search for files and uh, bst thus allows for quick retrieval and trans uh, traversal because of the property of binary search it has that it just minimizes the time complexity to order of login Dictionaries. Now, dictionaries again. See, wherever there is searching involved, we can of course uh, relate it with how BST is going to be applied. Because see, uh, dictionaries also have this property of searching, deletion of words, insertion of words. Where actually new words keep adding. You know, keeping uh, keep uh, you know they have the tendency to keep added, or we are even deleting. A few words have also been deleted from the dictionary. Or if you want to even search for words in the dictionary. You can uh, apply, you can think of that BSTs are actually applicable there as well. Nodes in the tree represent words. You don't know, you can uh, make an analogy like that. Phone book applications where you are again in a phone book of contacts, you're actually searching for someone's phone number or contact. That is where BST can be applicable. Symbol tables, BSTs are commonly used in symbol tables, uh, which are essential in programming language compilers and interpreters. So if you know about compilers and interpreters, this is again an application 
uh, because their associated information and BSTs enable efficient searching and retrieval of symbols, right? So anything to search or retrieve symbols, BST is applicable. Dynamic sets and databases. Now, see, databases, okay, we've definitely heard of database management system. We have a, in a database, you know, it's an organized collection of different tables. So if you have different tables in a database, right, and a table has different, different rows, columns, right? So when you want to actually index databases or you want to search for particular information, particular retrieve records from a particular table residing in a database, that is where you're going to also search, apply the searching and the retrieval techniques. And that is done using, you know, either SQL, or, which is structured query language or NoSQL, right? So the, over there as well, we are having the properties of fast search and search and deletion operations. If you heard of CRUD operations, which is create, read, update, deletion very, very important uh, in terms of actually developing, you know, if you're talking about actually software development, you uh, you should be familiar with CRUD operations. Uh, there as well, you can think of that BST is being used. Then network routers. In computer networks, BSTs are used in routing tables uh, to determine the best path and forwarding data packets. The tree structure allows for efficient lookup and decision making based on the des destination addresses. So actually looking up, you know, lookup is nothing but searching again. That is where we can use or uh, in, in routers as well, we can use BSTs. Auto complete and spell checking is also one area where BSTs have, uh, you know, proven their uh, application in real life. So there are just few examples of here to conclude that this all other uh, actually the examples of BST. So wherever there is efficient searching, insertion and deletion operations provided by BSTs, they actually make them a crucial uh, component of any uh, world of software development. So. BST is an important data structure to master. And here I saw, you know, just found a very uh, interesting problem, which is scale smallest uh, element. It's a medium level problem in lead code, which I'm going to be explaining you. Um, maybe I can, I'll just uh, explain it to you uh, in this video or uh, so that in the further videos, I can explain you the other, uh, other areas of computer science and other problems as well. So let me just cover you so that now uh, cover this particular concept or this particular problem in this video as well. So now that you understood about BSTs and applications, some lead code problems to solve are case smallest element in BST. You can have a look at in order, pre order, post order traverses in BST. Uh, to give you a gist of, uh, you know, of course, these other problems like in order, pre order, post order traversals in BST, I'm going to cover them in the upcoming videos. So to give you what an ex you know what is in order pre order post order they are also a type of uh, tra traversers in binary search tree. So when I talk about what traversal it is in order as name says it is in order. So if you know that what is the order of a binary search tree? I've already told you it is left is less than the root node left less than the right node right. Uh, so left root node right node is the order of an in order traversal. So when you're traversing or uh, moving from uh, you're actually visiting each nodes of binary search tree in this uh, in this order which is left uh, left node root node and then the right node that is in order traversal. Pre-order traversal is as the name says pre. So you're giving you see root is already always considered over here. So when you are saying pre-order traversal, you visit the root node first. Root node followed by the left node, then the right node. Root left right is pre-order traversal. Post-order traversal is when post means after. So you're going to give the root node the least priority or going to visit them the last. So left uh, left node first visited, then the right node, then the root node at the last is post-order traversal. Now that you've understood, in order is very easy, right? Pre-order is root, left, right. Post-order is left, right, root. So root is visited or traversed at the end. That is in post-order traverse in a binary search tree. I hope I've given you a gist about in theoretically what is binary search tree covered all the concepts of binary search tree. This is, uh, you know, I, I feel this is enough for you to actually, uh, you know, get into the theoretical part of binary search tree. There are other, you know, binary trees, by the way like full binary tree, complete binary tree, perfect binary tree. But in this video, the concept is binary search tree, which I'd like to which I'd cover. So uh, Kate's smallest element in a BST. Let me quickly explain you what the problem is saying here practically. So given the root of a binary search tree, which is, you know, uh, root is given. Root is over here. If you see the input over here, which is root is equal to 3, 1, 4. It's a list, which is 3, 1, 4, null, 2. So uh, 3, 1, 4. The left node of the, the one does not have any left child node. So that's why it's null over here. Two, because uh, the child node of uh, the right child node of one is two over here. K equal to one. So K is smallest means you're going to find the first smallest root or first smallest node of the tree. So root is given of a binary search tree and an integer K. Return the K smallest value. It is one indexed. It is now over here in the, you have to understand. Always remember what is the indexing order which is followed. 
Uh, I was saying that it can either be zero indexed or one indexed. But so you should always uh, remember that trees can have any index. Over here, it is clearly mentioned that it is one indexed. One index means that three is not the zeroth node; it is first node. This is second. This is third. This is fourth, and so on. So it is first index, right? Of all the values of the nodes in the tree. Output is one of here because when I say if you just uh, you know just manually think about it without actually coding, if you just if I just ask you that what is the first because k over here is given as uh, k is one over here, so what is the first smallest element or the smallest element of the tree? Smallest element of any tree of a binary search tree is always located to the leftmost, right? Because I've already told you the leftmost of the tree is the smallest. So leftmost in this particular, uh, if you see the leftmost of this particular tree is one, so that is the smallest. Because uh, of course this will be the root node if you consider it the in order. The in order of this particular tree is going to be in order is left, root, right. So the left over here is null. Then you go to root, which is one. Then right, which is two. Then again, backtrack and go to the root node, which is the topmost node of your tree, which is three. Then the rightmost node, which is four. So the in order traversal of this particular binary search tree is going to be one, two, three, and four. Similarly, if I just tell you the pre-order traversal of this tree, to just explain you, I'm not coding, but I'm just explaining you what is a pre-order traversal. The pre-order traversal is, uh, you know, as the word says, pre, root is given important. So root, left, right. So the root over here is three. Then you move to left, which is one. Then does it have a left tree? No, it does not. Then move to the right. So root, left, right. So three, one, two, and then four. Three, one, two, four is pre-order traversal. But one, two, three, four is in order traversal. Now, what is post order traversal? Post order traversal, root will be at the end. Just keep the root at the end. Left, root, right. Uh, left, right, and then the root node. So keep the root at the end, which is three. So post order traversal, this is going to be uh, one, which is the leftmost. Then the right, which is two. Then uh, it will move to the uh, left, right, and then the root. The right of this root node is four, which is uh, four. And then finally, three at the end because it's the root node. So one, Two, four, uh, so sorry, root over here is in the end, right? So if you're moving to left, the left over here is going to be, there's null over here. Then you move to the right. So it's going to be two. Instead of root, it's going to be two because root is given the least priority in the post traversal. So it's going to be two, one, four, and three. Two, one, four, three is going to be post order traversal. So that is, you know, what are the different traversals of binary search tree. In this particular problem, you want to find the smallest element. Smallest element, if you see, is the leftmost because already it's a binary search tree. Uh, the leftmost side is going to be the uh, smallest element. So if you see, this is uh, nothing but uh, you can consider it as an ascending order. If you already have an array, if you just make an array list of all these nodes by pushing them in an array list in the ascending order. When I say ascending order, which traversal you want to use? You want to actually use the in order traversal. In order means it's already in the ascending order or in the sorted order. So when you're actually pushing all these nodes or putting all these nodes in this uh, in, in the in order traversal in an array list, in a data structure or called array list uh, or an array. So when you are putting that in that order, the first uh, smallest element is going to be the one which is present in the first first index of the uh, array list. So the in order traversal of as I told you is going to be one, two, three, and four. The smallest element of this node of this tree is going to be one. Now, this was a very simple tree for you to understand. Let's jump to a, a second uh, level tree, which is quite uh, a larger one. And let's say, now, if I just tell you that the, the K value is not one here, it's three. So it's asking us the third smallest element of the tree. The third smallest element of the tree is going to be the third one in the ascending order, right? If you arrange all these nodes or what is of the tree in ascending order, whichever is present in the third index is going to be the third smallest element because the first smallest is going to be the first, last is going to be the largest element. So in the in order traversal, the third one is going to be, or in uh, the third index is going to be the third largest element. So if you see the in order traversal, it's just going to be, uh, in order to means left, root, right. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, and six. This is the in order traversal. Now just put each element. Now if you see here, this is quite very, very simple that you just, you know, moving, uh, you're just putting or pushing the uh, leftmost element first into the array followed by the root node into the array. That is, you are actually backtracking or uh, putting the root node. Then you are moving to the right node. So moving left, root, right. Then again, backtrack to the root node, then right. Backtrack to the root node, which is five, and then rightmost node is inserted last into the array list. Whichever is in the third index, right, that is going to be retrieved. So if you see here, third smallest element of this tree is three node. 
Now, uh, this constraints are given over here. Always read the constraints. Test out the test cases using pen and paper. This is one approach. Keep in mind. So, constraints, the number of nodes in the tree is n. So, that you have to understand this, what the constraints mean. And these are just constraints that the value of k is starting from 1. And it's always less than or equal to n. And node.val is always the value. But now, this is different. The node.value is over here. So, if you see the node, the, every, each over here, each element of the tree is a node. So, this node has, has a value of 1. This is 2, 3. So, a node can also have a value as 0. This is also in one of the constraints, right? One of the rules. The related topics. Let's just have a look at the related topics. Tree, depth first. This is like, kind of like hints you can use. It, you can either go with depth first search. You can go with depth, binary search tree, binary tree, or tree. So we are, I'm also going to be showing you two approaches, iterative and recursive approaches. See in any data structure, there are two approaches, right? Binary approach and recursive approach. So for recursive approach, I'm going to use depth first search. I'm going to use, just talked about DFS, you know, to, right now. I've talked about what is DFS, so I'm going to apply that. Uh, depth first search and show it to you using the recursive approach. And if uh, for the binary search tree and for the iterative approach, I'm going to uh, demonstrate it using stack, stack data structure. So now let's uh, just have this solved uh, already. So let's just get into the two most, um, you know, just explaining you, demonstrating you how to solve this problem. So uh now uh, now do not worry about the time complexity and everything if you're a beginner so always start with whatever idea you have even if it's a naive approach using iterative or p journey approach naive approach means it's an uh, you know one which takes a lot of uh, time complexity a very basic approach start with that then try optimizing it you can always uh, think of different approaches to optimize right so that in such a way it takes less time complexity Moving on, so if you see, this is already a pre-written code over here. This is a, a structure of a tree. So if you see how a binary tree is defined, this is already in the code. You can just see you're declaring variables val because a binary search tree has a value. Every node of a tree has a value. Tree node is a class over here we are using. It's tree node left, tree node right. We have any node is associated, has left node, right node, right? Reference to the left node, right node, and it has a value. Uh, then uh, this is a constructor we are using tree node because of this public class and uh, we also have a constructor. So constructor is a method, uh, right? It's, it's a function or a method which has the same name as the class name, but it is used for initializing or giving some initial value to the members of the class, right? Uh, and a constructor is also be uh, it's also used. The purpose of a constructor is for instantiating. When I say instantiating, instantiating means creating an object of a class. It's called as instantiating so constructors when you're using the new keyword so if i just say tree node is a class right so if i just say tree node object is equal to new tree node so right tree node a uh, new tree node the one uh, the function which is after following new is the constructor in java but then new is the keyword is a new operator by the way to actually instantiate or to create an object of the class and object of course is the object the variable uh, used for defining the object then tree node is the constructor. Tree node int value. Now this is a constructor. This is, we can consider it to be method overloading where we have the same method name, which is tree node, but the parameters, the data type and that, the number of parameters, the data, the, the data type of the parameters, right? They are different. So when we say here, this is an empty constructor, just to initialize. Then we have another constructor, tree node int val. In, inside the body of the constructor, we are writing this dot val is equal to val. This is a reference to pass to the object itself. So we are actually assigning this for instantiating. We can say we are assigning the initial value. So uh, this has a parameter or an argument of int val of integer type. Okay. And then we have tree node int val, tree node left, tree node right. These are the parameters. This dot val equal to val, left equal to left, this dot right equal to right. Now, that was just a structure, right, to uh, formulate. Coming to the logic of the problem, how we are actually solving this problem, how we are actually getting the kth, L, uh, kth smallest element of the binary search. Now, uh, remember that this rec the recursive approach is going to take order of n time complexity, right? Recursive approach is going to take order of n time complexity and an iterative approach using a stack, right? Iterating approach using a stack is going to take order of uh, log n time complexity, which is going to be nothing but order of h plus k. So h is the height of the tree, okay? And k is the k, uh, which is defined in our problem, which is the k smallest element of the tree, right? There's a uh, number which is signed, that is k. So uh, you are actually so stopping after the k element or the index is reached. So that is why it's going to reduce the time. So order of k, h plus k, or which is nothing but order of log n is when you're using iterative, but recursion takes more time. It, of course, it simplifies our process in less steps, uh, so we do not have to, you know, write lengthy codes. Recursion, we can, uh, you know, use already defined 
uh, functions we can call a function again to simplify the process to reuse the portion of the code we can use recursion but considering time complexity recursion will take a higher time complexity or take a higher time uh, more time uh, for solving a particular problem than iteration iterative approach and so to optimize recursive approach we have something called as dynamic programming and in dynamic programming uh, this is an advanced concept not in the scope of the video but to just give you a view overview of what is dynamic programming dynamic programming has two approaches which is memoization and tabulation very very important i would recommend highly for anyone who is who wants to actually uh, get better at data structures because these are really crucial topics for any jobs and placements so do learn memoization and tabulation and dynamic programming that will actually help you to optimize your code because as i've told recursion takes a lot of time so to speed up and to uh, lessen the time complexity look into further into the direct application and uh, memoization the approach is followed for dynamic programming then you also have the greedy approach right in recursion also uh, you have greedy approach which is you know sometimes in certain scenarios i would recommend greedy approach to be used but in some scenarios it takes more time it's more like a greedy approach is like uh, you know just finding the best optimal approach at that point of time without even you know considering the previous cases and does not backtrack as well so that was just you know a brief overview about recursive approaches now coming to this particular approach over here this over here is again a recursive approach i have used so if you consider over here in the recursive approach so let me first uh, show it to you using i've used different recursive approaches this is one of the recursive approach to follow wherein there is a class solution public and there are two functions here there is recursive function which is count nodes function and passing in the parameter tree node n because in n is the node then k smallest is the main function and inside this main function you are uh, calling in uh, the count nodes recursive function which serves as the helper function pre node root int k int count is equal to count nodes root dot left so first move to the left as i've already told you in uh, we are applying depth first uh, depth first switch right in dfs recursive approach move to the left so count nodes you're calling in that function root dot left you're passing in now inside the root node if you just have a look of this function count nodes root uh, you know count nodes as a function we are passing in pre node n a node should be passed in so if you want to pass in a node to the count nodes function first you traverse to the left most because we already know that the one in the left node in the left is going to be the smallest node in the in order of course so they, they, they definitely just move just pass in this function count node root dot left check there is a condition over here if k is less than or equal to count return k at smallest root dot left comma k now this is very important to understand so if i say k k is the given value so if you consider if k was 3 in that previous case so if 3 is less than or equal to count what is count count is the, uh, the is counting count nodes is just going to count the number of nodes okay it's just count uh, it's going to count the total number of nodes that is count nodes so if you just say that k is less than or equal to count return k at smallest and move to the left so initially move to the left else if k is greater than count plus 1 so 1 is counted as the current node here right one is counted as current node then move k at smallest root dot right now over here it's all calling in uh, this uh, count nodes function which is a helper function it's also calling its own function which is k at smallest now k at smallest is a function we have defined it's also calling k at smallest again that is why we it's recursion over here so uh, root dot left comma k and uh, then uh, k if k is greater than count plus 1 then call in k at smallest but, pa but pass in root dot right k minus 1 minus count so that is why if we see that k is greater than the count plus 1 count is the total number of nodes in that uh, following the particular node so if we see that k is greater than count plus 1 then move to the right of the node instead of moving to the left move to the right of the node finally after uh, you know uh, this conditions is checked return root dot val which is going to return you the kth element then in the count nodes you have you have this if n is null that is if there is no tree at all it's an empty tree you're going to return zero uh, return zero because there is no element only so the number of nodes present in the tree is zero the fun the function over here is this counting nodes as the name says uh, then uh, you're going to return one plus count nodes n dot left if this condition is not satisfied that is if there are nodes available if it's not an empty tree and if there are if this is a bst then return one plus count dot uh count nodes n dot left plus count nodes n dot right so uh count all the nodes in the left subtree plus all the nodes in the right subtree add it with you know add one to, to find the total number of nodes 
that was uh, you know approach for recursive uh, this is quite little uh, you know if you're a beginner i would say that uh, this might not strike to you much uh, you know in the first go so let me just again explain you some another recursive approach which is quite a little simpler for you to understand and the way i explained you in the uh, it could actually related with the ppt as well which i have explained you i was explaining you in order right always uh, you know uh, i was saying you that put all the nodes first in a array list in in order traverse then with all after arranging each and every node in the array list in order traverse in order means left root right then whichever falls in the second index suppose you say second smallest element whichever is falling in the second index that is the small second smallest element of the bst if, if anything falling in the kth index is the kth smallest element of the bst that's very that that damn simple so just follow this approach which is very very simple uh, public int you having kth smallest tree node root in k so over here just you know here as since we are pushing in every node of the binary search tree in a array list that is why initialize the array list this way array list the type of the array list over here integer nums is equal to in order now in order is very important here because this serves as the recursive helper function right so we uh, in order pass in the parameter which is root second argument which is an empty array list over here only they are initializing the array list which is empty the uh, the you know the um, importance of array list over here is to store the nodes or elements of the bst so new array list integer return nums dot k k minus 1 now the reason i'm putting k minus 1 over here is that if it is a zero uh, element right if it's a zeroth index binary search tree definitely you should use k minus 1 so if i say the uh, kth smallest element of a bst or the second smallest element of the bst the one present in the first index is going to be returned so return nums dot get k minus 1 now get over here is a method in build method if you know in uh, array list you have in order to access a particular element present in array list you use the get method then you have another function of here which is public array list integer in order tree node root array list integer array you just it is takes uh, just remember that in order function is a helper function which is a recursive function pass in two parameters firstly the root node should be passed followed by the empty array list or an array list should be passed then if root equal to equal to null return array this is the base condition or the base case very important to identify because if your uh, root is null that is there is no tree at all there is an empty binary search tree then you have to just return the array as well just return the array and then uh, but if there is uh, the, you know if the root exists if you have certain nodes in the tree then uh, you just say in order root dot left array since i told in order in order just starts with the leftmost node then the root node and the right node that's simple so in order root dot left array but since the array is initially empty right uh, initially you're just writing new over here which i've already told you new new is a new operator to instantiate an object to create an object so you since you're creating an array list over here which is empty initially right this is an initially uh, array list is empty to push the the nodes from the binary search tree which is this one the nodes on the binary search tree which is three you know this one one two three four in that order you want to push it so let me just go to that you want to push it so that is why you're writing uh, array dot add now in order to push elements into the array list this is a function add is the function like similarly to get elements of the array or to access elements of the array using the get function nums dot get of k minus one now to add elements to the array array list you're writing uh, uh, arr which is array dot uh, add root dot val so the uh, each and every the values of present in the root which is traversed in the in order traverse it is going to be added to the array list simply as i've already told you uh, this traverse in the pre in the in order traversal of the tree binary search tree push each and every element of the binary search tree the in order traversal into the array list and then access elements so in order call in this function now once you uh, once you traverse the leftmost subtree added the root node which you have traversed uh you know after traversing each and every node you are adding it to the array list then you have to also move to the right subtree right so that is why we are moving in forward move, moving forward to the right subtree right writing in order root dot right array finally returning the array this entire function executed you can have a look entire function executed will give you an array list with nodes of the tree present in in order now that you have all the elements say 1 2 3 4 5 in in order array list you're passing in over here to kth smallest which is the main function of yours by making use of the helper function which is in order you have this you have got this uh, in order array right you got the array list which is having all the nodes in in order that is stored in a variable called nums 
right now nums you're returning what will be your actual outcome or the final end result is going to be the element at the kth uh, index or the element which is the kth smallest so kth smallest element will be nums dot get of k minus 1 that is just going to be your final answer k minus 1 because we say if you, if you want the kth smallest element is going to be k minus 1 of course if this is zeroth index um binary search now you might have a question that in the question uh, the you might have a query that in the question is given uh, it's a one indexed uh, uh, binary search tree but that applies if you're using other recursive approaches and iterative approaches which i'll be demonstrating but this approach will require you to pass in k minus one the reason being that uh, that uh, you have traversed the elements or the elements of bst in an order and push them already into an array list array list is a dynamic array uh, and it has it starts with the zero index by default uh, it is you know uh, it is not fixed to a particular size unlike an array uh, the size is a dynamic array meaning that you can actually uh, add in elements to it you need not define it so you just say add dot add you're just adding dynamically each and every node or elements to the array list it keeps on increasing its size so you can increase or decrease the size of an array list so that was from the recursive point of view i have uh, this is a very simple approach for me so i recommend this approach for you to follow as well uh, coming to the iterative approach let me just explain you what is iterative approach this is the iterative approach using the stack now iterative approach uses the while loop over here it uses you can either use before while do while right so i'm using while loop over here this is damn very simple just few lines of code uh, you're passing in public in k smallest is the function right I already defined function over here with passing in the parameters which is tree node root tree node is the class root int k the data type of k is int integer stack tree node sg is equal to new stack when you're instantiating or you're just uh, initializing from stack an empty stack the use the usage of stack over here is for uh, adding or pushing in all this and similarly like in the recursive i've used array list to traverse each and every element but for traversing you have to use recursive over here you instead of traversing you're also traversing here but you're actually traversing by iterative approach that is why you're using while loop but you need some data structure to actually store all your nodes right over there we have used array list to uh push in some nodes which are traversed similarly over here you need some data structure to push in. like we have seen in dfs you are using stack data structure so this is iterative dfs we can say uh i mean iterative uh, uh, approach which uses stack so you're uh, you using the stack data structure over here stack pre node st is equal to new stack uh you have I always remember that this should not be integer over here although the values of the nodes are in integers uh, so you have to pass in the tree node over here because you're pushing in nodes you're not pushing in values unlike the array list array list the data type uh, if you see array list i have put in the uh, the type over there the type of the array list as integer i've not pushed uh, pushed the nodes over there i've added the values like uh, array dot add i've done array list dot add root dot value so the values or the integer values were pushed in array list but in stack it is not integers which are pushing in we are pushing in the nodes themselves so nodes are having the data type of tree node right node data structure so uh, i mean nodes so that is why uh, just passing this stack tree node st is equal to new stack now this is a base condition similarly to the previous one we had so a previous uh, approach i've just explained you the base condition you're always checking first whether the tree exists or not so if the root is only zero when the root is equal to null you can just say that there is no tree it's an empty binary search tree so if root equal to equal to null return minus one that is there is no uh use. like there, there is just return minus one as the answer okay so there is no k smallest element but if the root exists then while there is a while condition over here instead of passing in the uh, you know recursive functions just use this while condition while true now true is to just uh, you know um, this body will keep on executing and over here inside the while we also have another uh, nested while nested is a loop which is nested or you know it's inside some another loop outer loop and inner loop so this is the outer loop while true inner loop is while root right while root not equal to null so when we are uh, we are uh, executing all these operations so all these operations are going to be executed till by root is not equal to null so if at the time root becomes null then it stops right this process uh, the operations present here the body the operation present this body of while loop will not get executed but while root not equal to null while this condition is evaluated to true we have all these operations st dot push since we need to push in roots over there in array list i have used add function over here we are pushing in so pushing nodes by writing st dot push you're pushing in the root 
into the stack data structure root equal to root dot left after pushing into the stack of course in, in order here also we are using in order traversal so in order traversal uses the left root right property right left root right order so root is equal to root dot left which is we are moving on to the left side of the tree now once this is done root equal to now once uh, we come out of this loop when will we come out of this loop when root becomes null so root will become null when you are moved to the extreme left of the tree when you move to the extreme left of the tree come out of this loop and then say root equal to st dot pop once you've collected all the elements from the stack you know all you pushed all the nodes uh, by part, you know moving in the leftmost uh, traversal you pushed it in into the stack just say st dot pop so whichever element last in first property for stack so whichever element is uh, you know um, is pushed last will be indexed first or will be popped out and returned first so the one which is uh, you know uh, which is um, since we are doing root dot left we are starting from the root then going to the left whichever is present in the left most of the tree will be returned in the stack as well returned by the stack and will be stored in the root then if minus minus k this you can also you know you just write k minus minus first before this if k equal to minus minus k equal to zero instead of this you can just say k minus minus before the if condition and just say if minus minus if k equal to equal to zero otherwise if you don't want to do uh, the decrement operation to k that is um, you know you don't want to do uh, k minus minus before the if condition in this condition only like this you can write which is if minus minus k equal to zero return root dot val so the moment k value becomes zero now the the reason why k should become zero and then only you have to return the root dot val is because we are decrementing ourselves we are decrementing we are ourselves decrementing the value of k so right k is something like a counter which or an index pointer a counter a pointer which will help us to move or traverse the tree so the moment k becomes zero that is where we have reached our destination so return root dot val return the value of the node or the root uh, which uh, at the k Uh, index so that is going to be the kth smallest element root equal to root dot right now the next step becomes once we have uh, you know uh, uh, we have uh, implemented this but uh, k will not by the way remember k will not become uh, uh, zero unless you have moved to the rightmost okay so uh, of course it depends on the uh, question like if you say, if you want uh, something like third smallest and it's present in the leftmost tree you need not want to even go to root is equal to root dot right but then if it is not present in the leftmost if something present in the uh, rightmost subtree then you cannot avoid this statement root equal to root dot right has to be done because after moving to the left then to the root node you have to also traverse to the rightmost part of the binary search tree so that is why at the end you just say root equal to root dot right and the moment this is the stopping condition the reason i put over here while true is because it has to be executed all these operations have to be executed but then the moment uh, you know my k becomes equal to 0 the counter becomes equal to 0 that is where we are putting uh, we, are, we are passing a return statement over here which says root dot val return will serve as an end you know end to this function where it uh, to this loop where it will get uh, it will come out of the loop and it is going to just return root dot val for this particular logic function so we don't have a helper function over here uh, it's uh, something simple we can say it does not have any uh, any two functions over here like in the previous recursive case we have the recursive function and the main function the main function is calling the recursive function but here we don't have that in the iterative approach we just have here the one single main function which is kth smallest function and then just return uh, it's going to return the root dot value once this particular condition is evaluated to correct that uh, to do which is when the value of the k counter becomes equal to 0 so that was all about the iterative approach also there are different different approaches which i have followed over here using kth approach so this is again the similar approach i have to shown here now pop over here is uh, by the way the st dot pop is for removing the elements so when i told st dot push is for inserting element pop is for retrieving back the element this is again uh, the same approach i have shown you so definitely the different approaches do explore them so that was all about binary search tree i hope i have covered everything you know in detail starting you know even if you're a beginner it should be you now very easy for you to relate to different problems where you can use binary search tree so definitely when you have something to search and sort deletion uh, all these operations can be solved using binary search tree data structure and for that you have recursive approach and iterative approach i have covered topics like in order traversal pre order post order traversal for more practice you can uh, you stay tuned to my uh, youtube videos thank you very much